up in a greatly increased flexibility. And as a weapon of greatly increased flexibility. YouTube, what's up? This is Robert with Backyard Garages, and today we're going to be working on my Mitsubishi. Uh, I haven't talked much about it, but this I bought actually a few months ago, uh, and I've had a little bit of trouble with it from just general neglect. This one's kind of old, about 150,000 miles, and let's see, I've had to put a water pump on it, which I didn't videotape because, well, that was kind of painful and miserable. And then I also had a problem with the transmission, and that I just said, hell with it, and I paid a shop to do it. But now we're going to be doing something a little bit easier, and so I decided I'd make a video about it. This is going to be uh, actually changing out the, um, there is a repair in the exhaust that has been jack-legged on top of jack-legged on top of jack-legged, and I've unjack-legged it, and I'm going to try and fix it. So let me give you a, a little sense of what we're talking about here. No tractor today, thank you very much. I leave all the tractors to Shan Man, and least of all a two-door sports car tractor. So, anyway, I'm gonna show you what's up in just a second. Okay, now that I got it up in the air, I can show you what's up. Now, right down here you can see this flex plate. See that right there? There's normally some metal around here clamped or welded to hold all this together and this which goes up to the exhaust manifold this has actually got a flare on it you can kind of see it and so I'm pretty much presuming I don't know for certain but I think that this was held on originally with a uh, with a fiber biscuit or some or a similar kind of gasket and it probably got eaten out and so anyway, there were layer upon layer of uh, jack legs to repair it. The first one is this. It's, a, it's actually a stainless steel muffler patch thing that was held on by a couple of these hose clamps here. And then, oh, where is it? Here it is. On top of that, there was some of this, which is soda can material. I'm not sure can't really make out what kind of soda can it was anyway and then you see this stuff here as the next ditch effort was actually that's actually a high temperature epoxy well and what I'm gonna do to fix it I bought some of these pipe inserts and I have to trial and error fit to figure out which one of these will go in inside this diameter here and which will go in this diameter here and then I'm just gonna use common muffler clamps to tighten it down now the obvious question is why on earth aren't you gonna get the right flex pipe me, 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 me. I've already got more money in this car than I wanted to so I'm um, probably since this isn't eaten out and it's still solid I'm just gonna try to fix the end on it okay well ow. the uh, apparently I was incorrect about how this went together because I noticed and you can just barely see it there's a ring inside of this thing with a little tuft of that wire in there, right there. You can kind of see it there, there. And so that suggests to me that this entire thing, from the bottom of the exhaust manifold up there, down all the way to the cat, is all one piece in these cars. Now, someone who knows about these cars already probably could have told me that offhand. So that would make this piece an incredibly expensive piece of pipe. And the other thing to consider though is that I absolutely have to fix this because as you can see, that's the first O2 sensor and that's after this exhaust leak. And so that causes really, really bad running 
and causes it to run rich, bad gas mileage, low on power, the whole bit. So, and I'm really surprised it hasn't thrown a code on me yet. But, uh, I'm guessing, well, it could be any number of things. So I'm going to pick that out with a pair of pliers. If I can. So that I can get the my repair to fit in there properly. E D E. This is going to take a while. Especially holding the camera. All right. Now, this turns out to be the uh, one that I need right here. And I've measured how far this goes into the flex pipe and how far this goes into the uh, exhaust manifold, or the down pipe, rather. But what I'm going to have to do is to measure this distance right here, this distance measure from here where this reduction happens and measure that same distance up here and make a mark I'll use a red marker here and likewise here measure this distance and then measure up from here that distance and make a red mark and that's where I'm actually gonna cut this thing so that the uh, joint is actually flush because if I put this in here it's gonna be putting way too much material between the uh, flex pipe and the exhaust manifold and I won't be able to get it in there that and it'll put strain on all the exhaust mounts and all that sort of thing so I'm gonna do that real quick and that'll be and you'll see it cut next it just occurred to me uh, a few seconds ago that really I had probably better wait to cut this end until after I've cut this end. So I'm most of the way through here and now I'm going to cut this one off while I can still get a good grip on it in this sawhorse thingy. Alrighty, it's been cut off, and I scraped off the label, because that'll burn out and cause an exhaust leak later on. And let's see how it does. Alright, let's see. Beautiful. That's exactly what I wanted there. And... right in there. So, time to get clamping. I'm going back and forth to keep the pressure fairly even on this because I want to get a good seal. All right, now for the pain in the ass part. Yeah, 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 jeepers. Rubber. Come on, come on. Okay, this could take a while. Okay. Alright. Now, as it turns out, in order to do that, I had to undo. See if I can get over there. I had to undo er, the. Nope. Dang it. In order to get to that, I had to undo my cat mounts to get that in there. But now it's in. Okie dokie. There's that. And I'm going to take these hose clamps off because these are nice and stainless. I might still be able to use them. And I mean, this is pretty solid. We'll see if it 
uh, contains the exhaust gases a little bit better. All right. Oh man, I don't know about this. Let's see. Not sure what's with all that. I gotta take a closer look. Alright. Well, that was, I think that was just steam because it went away in a real hurry and there doesn't seem to be much uh, exhaust leak out of this. But uh, I've got a different problem. Hear that? You can hear the stereo over the car from outside the car. Now, that isn't a problem for normal people, but it might be a problem for me, but I've got a Raptor muffler under my deck that I could probably put on this thing and make it sound decent. But thanks again for watching. All who oppose them are indicted as warmongers. Another kind of interesting thing about these Mitsubishis, well, I don't know if it's Mitsubishis in general, but this body style, which I did not realize, is that you have to lift them by this lift point along the edge. Now, it was my understanding that you only did that for doing tires until I realized that if you put a jack on the actual subframe, it doesn't end up pretty. It, there isn't much metal there. And I'm not the only person to have apparently made that mistake because both sides are all boogered up all the way down. But I just thought that'd be an interesting, useful thing to you Mitsubishi owners. Or prospective owners. Or rather DSM owners because this isn't so much particularly Mitsubishi. Never mind.